Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. Welcome to my tutorial on how to cut out foam using the Brother Scan and Cut. This video is part two of my series of Back to School with the Brother Scan and Cut. In the first video in the series, we cut out stencil material. So please go back and watch that because in that video, I teach you how to load your blade for your deep cut blade holder. And we are gonna be using the deep cut blade holder for this tutorial as well. Let's get started. Now let's, let's start with just a bunch of shapes, cut out foam and shapes. Okay. Let's start there. Pattern. We're going to go to pattern when you turn on your machine and we're going to go here to this one, the shapes. And I'm just going to go ahead and make one square. If you're going to be making a whole page of the same shape, you do want to consider how far apart each one is because on the foam, you need to leave a little space between each one. I'll show you that in a minute. Let's just go ahead and make a three inch square. And then we're gonna add a circle. Okay, and let's just say a three and a half inch circle. All right, so you see what I mean? We're gonna put these on the, we're gonna put these on the mat and I'm leaving a little distance from the corner. Actually, just put them on this side. If you're like me, you have one side of your machine that cuts a little better than the other side of your machine. So in, in my case, the right side cuts better than the left, so I like to cut on the right side. I think because I've, I've just used these other sides so much. Okay, now we're gonna take a piece of foam. I'll link to some foam in the description, but. We're gonna be in this tutorial using regular foam and sticker foam, but either way, they're all the same, the same height. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna lay this foam down on the mat. Now my mat's not very sticky, although I did just restick this mat. So while it's cutting, I'm actually gonna be doing a lot of rubbing and, and sort of tapping to make sure it doesn't come off the mat. I could also just use painter's tape to help hold it down. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and Set our deep cut blade. Now I've been trying six and seven as an experiment. I've actually tried other depths. Seven works better. Don't go anything beyond seven, but in your case, you, you may be able to use a depth of six. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna load the deep cut blade just like you would load the regular blade holder. And I showed you how to put the blade into the deep cut blade holder in the last video. Okay, we're gonna load that up. We're gonna close that. And now I'm gonna just tell you a couple other settings that you'll need to know. So if you're writing this down, you need a blade depth of six or seven, depending on your machine. Now go into this little wrench and go to page two. You're gonna use a cutting speed of two because with foam, you wanna lower your cutting speed. You're gonna use a cutting pressure of six because with foam, you need a higher pressure than the default because of the, the depth of this foam, this is pretty thick. So those settings, cutting speed of two, cut pressure of six. We're gonna say okay, we're gonna say okay again. I'm sorry. Okay, again, and cut. And we're going to get started. Now, as I told you, I don't want my foam to slip, so I guess kind of do this. <laughs> because I don't, I don't, I don't want to, like, fight with it trying to move while it's doing its thing. So, see? The foam started coming up. Okay? So here we are. We have our foam shapes. Okay, and let me just peel that off the foam. See, you know you weren't too deep because it, you even had to pull it off the foam. Okay, that's great. Now, so let me show you some more things you can do with it and how to go a step further. So, you can cut out shapes in many different colors and you can cut out different patterns. And then, in school, you can group the students and you can use these, so for educational purposes and for grouping. So, one thing you could do is give everybody a shape and then you could say, okay, all of the... Ovals are the team leaders. Okay, if you gave out a bunch of shapes in the classroom. Everybody that has an oval is a team leader. Or you could say, everybody who is orange is on the same team. Okay, so, so they won't know how they're being grouped yet when you give them each something to hold. And then you say, okay, everybody that's a you know, star is going to be the recorder. Okay, so I've made loads and loads of these shapes. 
Now I want to show you how to mass produce shapes a little easier and just just something that I did in my projects here. Okay, and you can also do it, obviously, the obvious reasons to cut out foam is to learn shapes and colors and to do and to do educational things with these, but I'm saying you can also use the colors and shapes as grouping, as a way to group. All right, let's say, let's go back. Now, you have, you have your foam, and I'm just gonna show you how we got to this point, where you get, you can just mass produce. I, these are, you save these as well, these are the foam patterns. So I'm gonna pull it up and then we'll, we'll go backwards. Okay, go back to delete all patterns, okay. Now, pattern, save data. I'm gonna pull up some that I did just to show you and then I'm gonna show you how I made them. So here's, here's a group of patterns. And they are on, they're a group because look, well, oops, sorry, let me say okay. Now, when you, you can move them around as a group. Now what's really nice is then you can cut some out and then you can put, load your foam in and you can move them around and not always cut in the same area of your mat because it seems like to me that different areas of the mat cut a little better than others. Okay, so this is what we're gonna create, something like that. I just wanna show you how to go about doing that. So, I'm sorry, just go back to the, okay, we're gonna go to pattern and we're gonna click on shapes. And it really doesn't matter. I'm just gonna make them three inches for now. And I'm gonna keep adding shapes, okay? We're gonna just add a circle. I'm just doing three inch width for now because I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna add a triangle. Okay, well you get the idea. I don't need to add five shapes for you to get the idea. Now, a little bit smaller, width of three. Let me even make this smaller, width of two and a half. I just know because of my, mat, my foam size. Okay, and a little bit smaller. And here is why. This is gonna make sense when I show you what I did here. So now you're gonna take a piece of your foam material. Let me just grab a color we haven't used yet. I'll just get this purple, okay? And I'm gonna take the material and I'm gonna load it onto my mat and I'm going to do what's called a background scan. I'm gonna say okay, and I'm gonna use this button here, the background scan. I'm gonna say start. Okay, so there is my background of my, that's my foam sheet. It's not a full sheet. So I'm just gonna move everything onto the foam. See, that's what I'm saying. And that's why we would be able to group these and use these patterns over and over. I'm just gonna put the triangle in the middle. I mean, not the middle, but down here, sorry. Okay, leaving room for other shapes, but you get the point. All right, so here's my group. And now I know that this will fit on my foam every time. So you're teaching preschool, say, and you have like a little, you want to teach them a few shapes, a circle, a square, and a triangle, and you want to make one of these for everybody so that they can use it as a little puzzle, etc. So here's how you do the grouping so that you can reuse this pattern over and over. Go back to the editing mode and use this selection tool here with the three squares. Select everything on your screen, this one. All three of your shapes are selected, say okay. Click the group button down here, and now the magic happens. You can actually move these around as a group. So now you can do the background scan for your foam, and then every time you wanna cut it, sometimes you might cut it over here, sometimes you might cut it over here. It doesn't matter. Right now I'm cutting it right there because that's where my foam is. That's my background. All right, once again, in case you just tuned in, uh, we're using a blade depth of seven on the deep cut blade holder, okay? Not this blade holder. This is the standard blade holder. We're using the deep cut blade holder. In the, in the first video of the series, I show you how to load the blade into that holder. Okay, we are using, I'm gonna say okay here. Oops, let's save that. Let's save that to our machine. And okay, we're saying okay. And the other settings real quickly. Always save your patterns because that's what I'm talking about, we're using them. 
Once again, settings, page two, cut speed of two, pressure of six. Okay, so your blade depth is a seven, cut speed is a two, and cut pressure is six. I will have this in the description. And we're gonna just say okay and cut. And we're gonna say start. And once again, you see what I do as it's cutting. I do, these mats are not very sticky. That's why I make sure that this foam does not slip. Also, I'm trying to make sure the foam stays down because if it gets caught, <laughs> then it can get stuck in your machine. All right, I'm peeling the foam off. Now here you have a great little activity for kids. So you give everybody their little sheet of foam and they can, they can trace the shapes. They can put the shapes together like a little puzzle. You can do this with any kids, homeschooling, school kids. Okay, you can make them put different color shapes into the different colors. So save these and then use these for tracing and coloring. So that's how you group and retrieve. Did I show you how to retrieve? Sorry, I don't wanna skip any steps. So we've grouped this. Once again, we've saved it to our machine. Let's say okay and let's go back home. Now, I've deleted everything off the screen. We're gonna start your machine up and boy, you have to cut these for a whole class of 18 kids. You go to pattern, you go to save data, you go to your machine, you go to the last page. You can jump, you could scroll through one to 10, but you can just go to the last page. And there are your shapes. You can then say, okay. You can background scan in another piece of foam, which I'm not gonna do. And you can line this group of shapes over the top of your foam and cut it again and again and again. Or you can even put two on one, Matt, two pieces of foam will fit. So that's how to mass produce these. Okay, now let's move on to another uh, thing you can do with foam. I've showed you how to cut out shapes. Now we're gonna use uh, what's called sticker foam. So you can buy foam that has stickers on the back. See? So if you get this kind of foam, you're gonna place the foam sticker side down. Never cut into the sticker. Just put it sticker side down. I mean the, the flat side down. All right, so here we go. We're gonna to go to pattern. And I think something really fun to do with stickers would be going to this shape here, this one that's like the clip art one, and go down to frames. And the frame I selected was this, this frame here. A, let me put on my glasses. ARKO24. So select that frame, and let's just make it, I think two and a half. I think I might have to make it a little smaller even. But let's try two and a half width, and put it on the mat. And I'm gonna say, okay. I'm gonna put two of those on the mat. Now, I'm gonna background scan. We've been doing background scanning. I just told you that a minute ago. We're background scanning in my sticker sheet of the foam. Now, I did, by the way, cut all through my stickers. So I think, oops, I don't want that to get fall out of place. It already fallen out of place. <laughs> That's okay though, because we know where it's at on the mat. Okay, there and there. We're gonna put the foam onto the background sticker sheet. Now, the only thing about the stickers is I, I go a little bit lower, maybe six and a half, maybe six. It's just because you don't need to cut all the way through the sticker part. So go ahead and lower your blade depth slightly, but cutting stickers in foam is the same exact thing as cutting foam. Foam stickers are foam, okay? So let's say okay, and we're gonna cut. And we're gonna start. And again, this foam slips, so I'm holding my, see, I'm holding my fingers on the mat. Tap, tap, tap. <laughs> I just wish the mats were stickier, but I love my brother's scan and cut. Other than that. Okay, so while that's cutting, here's the idea I have for that one. So you have your little frames, and then you have your, your school picture. They can, the students can put in the frame. Or you could do giant frames, and you could, they could decorate the frames with little rhinestones and things, and little, little confetti, okay? Or, this, this is a third grade picture of my nephew, by the way. So, what you could do is, at that age, at third grade level, you could put this on a piece of paper, and it says on the paper, I'm, I'm videotaping, excuse me. So, so, you could put this on, the background of a page. So the page could say something like back to school. And you talk, the students have to write what they, 
did what grade they're in and the date and what they learned in school that day and you you have sentences that they fill out and then their picture goes on the page as well and what i thought was nice is this is a sticker so that's so you could do back to school with a little frame and this could be printed out of paper so that's the idea let's okay that's okay let's let's unload and here you have like i said because i didn't cut as deep it cut through the sticker but it still stayed as one sheet but here you go you peel those off now save the inner shapes as well so those are your frames all right now lastly and i need to go help my husband unload the groceries as you heard him yelling over there for me um okay lastly is something else i thought of for back to school with foam and that is these little keys let me put it on a different color background okay here we go so you have a key you can cut out key and then you can have the students use these as like a hall pass you could cut out different color keys and you could say well are you going on an errand you must take you must take the key to get back in the room and you could put on you know maybe different colors and hang them near the door so this this shape was right here I found this shape right in here inside let me go to home okay pattern this little clip art one and I found it in I believe the household items with the little one with the little house and there's the key okay so I think I made it five inches tall so that's just one more idea of what you could do with foam I mean the possibilities are endless door hangers decorative ornaments for holidays um, learning to trace and again if they you know chew on it <laughs> dribble on it like rip it it's I mean it really doesn't matter it's just foam it's so easy to get on Amazon or at craft stores. I will have links to foam in the description. So you can use the foam or the sticker foam. We just covered both of those things today. We covered the blade depth, the pressure, the speed. We covered ways to use it for educational purposes. And of course you can use it for your crafts as well. So thank you for watching and stay tuned for more tutorials on what to do with the Brothers Can and Cut in our back to school series. Thank you for watching.